hopefully when you're watching this uh, lesson this morning year five you will have seen the youtube conversation with frank cultural boyce uh, and if you were able to to see that um, please continue to send us in um, pictures screenshots videos if you're able to take them of your uh, viewing of the conversation because um, it'd be lovely to see them and then in the future i sh should be able to share some on here um, and with some of the screenshots and so everybody can really experience um, what happened on Thursday afternoon. So moving on, today we are continuing with inference. It's our last session in fact and then we will also be moving on to the next chapter of Cosmic. So let's get going. Okay, so yesterday I set you these three different chilly questions. So we're going to start off by having a look at those before moving on to a different part of the text and having a go at some other inference style questions. So, chilly one yesterday was how do we know Florida recognised Liam? So, let's have a look in the text. So, Florida was obviously a key word in, that, in the question, so that's what I'm going to be looking for in the text. And there she is, right in the middle of the page. So, Florida, who kept waving and making faces. So, how do we know she recognised him? It doesn't say Florida recognised Liam, but we can see from the text there are some clues. It says she kept waving and making faces. Now, I go thinking back to earlier in the week when we said about using our own experiences, this is a good example. If you didn't recognise someone, it's unlikely you would be waving at them and making faces. So we know that Florida recognised Liam because she was waving and making faces. That's the clue. That's the evidence that we are looking for combined, combined with our own experiences. Truly two or question two, Mrs. Sass was excited to introduce Liam. How to prove it. So let's have a look somewhere in the middle where it talks Lorraine, who is Mrs. Sass. How, does she, how do we know? So it says here, and now I'd like to introduce to you and to a new member of staff. He is going to be teaching media studies and will be form tutor for class nine Mandela. This is Mr. Middleton. Now, does that provide evidence to answer the question, was excited to introduce Liam? I'm not convinced that it does. So let's go back a bit further. Lorraine said everyone was welcome and she'd hoped everyone had a good summer. And then something about a new registra registration procedure. And then she said, and now I'd like to introduce to you to a new member of staff. So I think the fact, the evidence of the fact that we've got the quote, um, so the author has specifically put that in to show rather than quotes to do with the other stuff to kind of highlight the fact that the character is more focused on this than the things mentioned previously that's kind of the clues there so how do we know because she did it she's more time we spent specifically on that point on rather than the registration procedure or the good summer and, and so on and so on chili three which phrase tells us mrs sass was keen to see year seven so let's have a look how do we know she was keen to see year seven? The text is the in clue here. Lorraine said everyone was welcome. That's the clue because everyone would refer to the entire year group. The fact that she's happy to see them was she said that they were welcome. That's the clue in the text. Okay, let's move on. So we'll recap those words one last time. Abnormally, certificate, procedure, metaphorical, dispensation the root word in stroking being stroke we'll drop the e and add the ing on and the spelling rule in specialist is that shul in the middle c i a l and then repeating these words if you want to act them out at home because um, i know some of you like enjoy to do this in the class then please do maybe send in a description or a photo of it see if we can work out which words you are acting out as well but for now, I will repeat them, and if you can, I will read them out rather. If you could repeat them after me, abnormally, certificate, procedure, metaphorical, and dispensation. Right. Let's have another hour turn question. So the question is, which word tells us the children were uncomfortable? So let's have a look at the text. They all squirmed again. 
Why have we all been to the Waterloo with a bypass in the shopping precinct when none of us have ever been to Waterloo with a waterfall? The Waterloo in the jungle, the Waterloo by the frozen lake. Why are these places? They're not in Narnia. You don't have to find a magic wardrobe to get to them. They're not in Azeroth. You don't have to create an avatar and climb inside a computer. They're real places. You can go there by bus. Sometimes it'll take a lot of buses, but they're just there. They're part of your world. Which word tells, word tells us the children are uncomfortable? Have a look. Have a discussion with someone nearby. And then we'll have a look together now. So for me, the word is right at the beginning. They all squirmed again. The word is squirmed. Now, thinking about your own experience, if you squirm, it might be when you are feeling nervous or embarrassed. It means it's that, that discomfort that comes with that word. So how do we know they were uncomfortable? Because it says they squirmed. And if that says again as well, we would suggest they were very uncomfortable. So the word is squirmed. Now, like yesterday, here we go independently, which is your turn. I have got three chili questions. So like before, I'll read the text again. And then I'll, you can pause it anytime you want to have a look at it once you know the question. So, the sun was shining, the birds were singing. I walked up to the gates and pushed. Nothing happened. Waterloo High is a high security school. The gates are locked at 9am and no one can get in or out without a swipe card. That's why there was a man in a leather jacket standing on the other side of the gates, talking into the intercom. I'm the new head of media studies, he was saying. So the question one, how do we know the school is secure? So, doesn't say the school is secure. What are the clues? Pause the screen if you need to. Chili two, how was Liam feeling as he crossed the playground? So this is a slightly trickier one. Think about what Liam is describing around him that might reflect his mood things that you would notice if you were in a particular mood and then chili three how do you think his mood has changed at the end so just to describe his mood as he's walking across the playground but then yet something happens right at the end of that short part bit of text how do you think his mood has changed can you give evidence to back that up actually three so you might say his mood was one thing because of something and then by the end of this page his mood is now something else because something else is giving a point an answer to the question and then a because and then use it giving the evidence or your own experience to back that up okay Please continue to send out your ideas, your inferences into year five via the email address. And then now uh, we will move on to Cosmic for the last time this week. My Planet Panda Pop. The school assembly incident was bad. The Porsche showroom incident was like being killed and sent back to level one with no spare lives. All we wanted, said mom, was for you to learn some social skills. Social skills, said Dad. Well, let's see. He got a little girl to pose as his daughter and he persuaded a salesman to lend him a Porsche. He's got social skills. He's got too many social skills. We asked him to learn some and he learned too many. That's the problem. It turned out that Dad was right about visible friends being different from cyber friends. If someone doesn't turn up on Warcraft, you can always just recruit someone else. But when I walked through the New Strand Shopping Centre on Saturday mornings, even though there were thousands of people there, it was really noticeable that none of them was Florida. Mum got really stressed about the whole thing. Liam, she kept saying, what are we going to do with you? Dad looked on the internet for self-help groups for people with unusual problems. About an hour later, he came back and said, what about this? Popular coastal resort, Tunisia. £150 a head. Tunisia's a bit far, said Mum. I was hoping there'd be a group in the library. 
No, I'm talking about a holiday. That's what we need, isn't it? The three of us go somewhere no one knows us and just unwind. I was completely excited about this. I'd never been abroad before. I spent the whole week reading holiday brochures and even went with mum and dad to the travel agent, which was a disaster because when I got completely excited, I talked too much. For instance, when Tunisia was mentioned, I said, yes, four star accommodation, all meals, and we could go and see the Sahara Desert. Mom said, the Sahara Desert? You are joking. The Sahara Desert is a desert. People get lost in deserts. They starve to death and see mirages and get eaten alive by ants. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to a desert. The travel agent woman said, if you did choose the optional desert excursion, Mrs. Digby, you would be accompanied by a trained local staff and a fully air-conditioned coach. It's a very well-organised trip. No one ever, said Mom, intends to get eaten by ants, but accidents happen, especially in the Sahara Desert. What else have you got? Tenerife is already quite warm. <clears throat> Although it is politically part of Spain, the island of Tenerife is off the coast of Africa and is therefore hot all year round, especially in the south. It's more rainy in the north because this big pointy mountain in the middle of the island. It's so tall that it has snow on top, even in the summer. It's called Taid. Mummy looked interested. Mum looked interested when I told her all of this. I probably should have stopped just there and not gone on to mention that it's not just an ordinary mountain. A volcano, said Mum. An extinct volcano, said the woman from the travel agent very quickly. Extinct or dormant? said Mum, surprising everyone with her unexpected geological knowledge. What's the difference? asked the travel agent lady. The difference, said Mum, between life and death. Travel agent woman held up a brochure for Florida. Very popular. She smiled without going into detail. Mum looked at me. I said nothing. She looked at the travel agent. who just kept smiling. She looked at Dad. He tried to keep smiling too. But she raised an eyebrow and she just can't cope with that. In the end, he admitted. Alligators. After that, there was Turkey, earthquakes. Cyprus, poisonous triggerfish. Italy, the mafia. And Greece, shipwrecks. Then we were standing outside the shop with mom taking a deep breath and saying, well, I haven't even gone anywhere and I'm already glad to be home. They decided to forget about the holiday and read redecorate the kitchen instead. Dad pointed out that a holiday only lasted a week or two, whereas a new kitchen would last forever. So instead of going on a well-organized air-conditioned trip of the Sahara, we went to nothing but drainers and looked at granite work surfaces. This one's a bit pricey, said the man, but you get what you pay for and this is real Italian granite. It was mostly blue. I remember looking at it thinking, that's igneous rock. That came from way underground in Italy. That drainer has had a more exciting life than I have. Dad said, what do you think, Liam? Good, you can't go wrong with igneous. It is igneous, isn't it? The man said, I don't think so. These are new in today from our supplier in Turin. I said, it's made of crystallised magma. No, son, this is real Italian granite. It's not made at all. It was made by magma bubbling up from the Earth's mantle millions of years ago. The molten magma cooled in the crust and turned into crystals, then probably sat being squeezed into flatbeds for about a billion years until it was dug up by Italians. All that trouble, and then it's chopped up and sent to nothing but drainers, where my mum will look at it for five minutes and say, Ooh, I'm not sure about this colour. The man looked at Dad. Dad just shrugged. He's gifted and talented at school. They do all about this kind of thing. Last month, it was global warming. Mum said, he is right, though. I am not sure about this colour. Not only was I not allowed to go to Tunisia, I wasn't even allowed to walk home by myself anymore. Mum and Dad took to meeting me from school and escorted me home like a prisoner. They would have banned me from Little Stars too, except everyone else had done so much work on the big friendly giant that it wouldn't be fair if it had to be cancelled. Lisa tried to be nice about it. You're the star, she said, so you get your own dressing room. Then she shoved me into this cupboardy thing just behind the stage. 
There was one chair, no window, a packet of pickled onion flavour, Space Ranger crisps and a blue panda pop. Space Rangers are the cheapest crisps that money can buy. They are crisps, but only until you put them in your mouth. The moment they make contact with your tongue, they stop being crisps and become soggies. The flavour is sort of optional and it seems to fall off the crisps and make a powdery sludge at the bottom of the bag, which you can scoop up with your finger if you like. Blue Panda Pops are supposedly raspberry flavoured, but the flavour <coughs> is irrelevant as they are so fizzy that when you drink them, all your senses close down and your brain just shouts, FIZZY! Later on, you belch a lot, which is fine if you're playing the BFG, as he's quite a belchy character. I remember sitting in that cupboard feeling like the rest of the world had completely vanished and that I was now orbiting the sun entirely on my own, on a chair. Planet Panda Pop, sitting in a tiny enclosed space, eating strange chemicals. It turns out the Little Stars was an outstanding, outstanding training for astronauts. All right, on Monday, we'll see what happens next. Well done so far, Year 5.